All right, people, we back. Yes, Another sir. episode. Random Acts of Podcast. It's your boy, Ampavelli. Mr. J. So, man, we, uh, what's today? It's Friday? Today yeah. is Friday. You know what? Good was, Friday, actually. Good yeah. Friday. Salute to yeah. Good yeah, Friday. Yeah, we're yeah. on date the episode. But it is, we're recording on Good <laughs> Friday. I don't, I don't know exactly what date is dropping, but <laughs> just know we're recording this on a Good Friday. So, it's been a good day, man. Traffic Indeed. crazy out there. I, will, I was, I actually got on here on time slightly. But I was slightly late. I was, it was like bumper to bumper traffic and whatnot. Yeah. And I was like, man, this, this accident that's stopping the traffic better be crazy. I looked to the side and somebody changing their tire. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody and just got like the whole the, thing blocked got up. the whole thing blocked up. It's just somebody just changing. They, they minding their business. They like, yeah, they whatever. I'm gonna do do my thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know people, man, when the traffic, nine times out of ten, just motherfuckers just being nosy as hell. But you ain't lying. Way, yeah. Either way, man, we, we made it here, man. We got a good special guest today. Yes, That's sir. Photographer, man. I, uh, I was chopping it up with him, man. Usually we get people from Jacksonville. This brother is not from Jacksonville. <laughs> we gonna get into, we're going to get into his story. Uh, it's good. It's going to be good talking to him. It's already been good talking to him before recording, but because yes, we don't ever get the story. Of the photographer, the videographer, right, right, ever from the other side. It's yeah. like it's yeah. just like shoot me, shoot me, yeah. shoot me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hurry, hurry up with my pictures. So, right, right. <laughs> but uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. Cool. All right. Uh, so my name is Nate Nate Sauer. Um, so I'm a photographer, as they said. Uh, I've been in Jacks for like two and a half years. Uh, I'm originally from a small town um, called Benita in Oklahoma, uh, which I know y'all hearing that is probably like, where the hell is that? But uh, yeah. What, so, like, what major city is it by? Tulsa is like an hour away. Tulsa, um, okay. And then Oklahoma City is the capital of Oklahoma. That's like three, like two and a half hours away, yeah. probably. You a Thunder fan? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good, so good. I, I, as a kid, I went to a couple games with like my dad and a couple yeah. friends and stuff. So yeah. You cried. You, you cried on KD Lift? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't burned the jersey, did you? Bro. <laughs> you ain't Bro. burned the jersey, did KD you? KD was the dream. That was, <laughs> like, if, looking back on it, like, we really had a super team at one point in time and just didn't take advantage of that. At right. All. Like right. KD, Westbrook. We have Harden, Ibaka. Harden, I Ibaka, mean, like all Adams. Like, right, right, right. Come on, man. A little patience would have got y'all far. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, uh, what brought you to Jacksonville? Uh, so, I'm actually in the military. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I joined, I joined the military fresh out of high school. I was 18, graduated. Um, I joined, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, my older brother went to college, um, kind of saw how that worked out. Uh, I was about to, I was, you know, I was coming up on my graduation. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I know I definitely didn't want to go deal with that money problem. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, you know, and I knew that it was going to be good for me to get out of my hometown. So I just, you know, I enlisted right there. Like, yeah, right you get there. to see the world and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So I enlisted, you know, went, did all the training, did all that. And Jacksonville is my first station. So I got put down here. I'm on NAS over on West Side. So, That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. So how you enjoy the military life? Uh, it's not, I mean, <laughs> it, there's, there's pros and cons, like with anything. Like I, right. I, I, I appreciate the military. Um, it got me here. It got me out of my hometown. Like it's it's brought me to meet people that I never would have met if I'd have just stayed home. Right. It's brought me to change in ways that I never would have changed if I would have just stayed home. Like it's been it's been great as far as like everything everything about the military that's changed my life outside of actually being in the military has been great. But, yeah. <laughs> but, if that makes sense. But day, right. but day to day in the military is not it's not really what I'm looking for. So I won't say I'm a huge fan, but I respect. I mean I respect it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's great. It's been great for me. So. You know, that's not that's not me bashing it at all. Right, right, right. No, yeah. no, no. I definitely yeah. get it. Definitely get it. Yeah. What's your craziest experience in the military? <laughs> uh, so in boot camp, um, I went to boot camp like peak of COVID. Uh, so I actually spent like an extra month at boot camp. Uh, mm. I was in quarantine for like a whole month, for a whole month, because um, my rack mate that I was with tested positive and he was sleeping above me. So they yeah. sent me, they sent me and him away, and so my crazy experience. Um, was probably, I would say towards the end of boot camp when we graduated, right? So mm -hmm. we're in like a, so the way it works is like a, it's like a, just a big room and there was 80, there were 80 kids in my division. So they call them divisions mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, so we had graduated and we were waiting on our bus, our bus ride out and our plane rides out to go to wherever we, it was that we were going next. Right. And um, so the night before we were supposed to leave, all of us were like it was like an all-nighter we pulled an all-nighter so we're just running around like being crazy middle of the night and there was actually these chairs in the middle of the department um that if you took 
they were like normal just like school desk chairs but if you took the rubber piece off the bottom of the leg you could they would they would slide smooth on, on the ground. <laughs> so you, so we were taking them off and we were sliding all over the place like just like you would run jump on it and you slide all the way across the room because the floors were waxed. Right, right. Yeah, and so we were doing that and then soon we realized that it scratched the floor like it was, it was, it was up the floor like, like bad. bad. should have known. <laughs> but the crazy thing about that is is so like once we, after we realized that it was scratching up the floor we all panicked like right. like we got to fix this somehow. Every single one of us got our toothpaste out, bro. And Get the fuck re- out of here. Re waxing the floor with the toothpaste. <laughs> like that. And then the next day they walked in, and it's funny because they call them RDCs. Yeah. Um, like the people that, I guess, lead us in training or whatever. They walked in, like, why the hell? It smell like a dentist office in here. It just smelled like another, like That's funny as fuck, oh, man. man. It, was funny. it was funny, bro. It That's was funny. funny. That, was <laughs> good. that was a good story, man. Uh, uh, we got a homie, DJ Malone. He's been on here a couple times. He's in the military. And yeah. like people in general, we asked him, like, hey, man, what's the craziest military story? Bro. I was fighting. Right. Every right. time. All kinds, all kinds of fights. All kinds of fights. Dude, you like, man, what you, what you learning? Though? He just tells us a bunch of stories about fighting and shit. Like, It'd be entertaining, but I'm like, damn, yeah. man, you like yeah. that military? Yeah. That's pretty cool, bro. Uh, so how old are you, if you don't mind me 21. asking? 21. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to be 22 in July, so. For sure. Yeah. Still fairly young. Yeah, man. Yeah. Got a lot of life ahead. That's yeah. what's up. Life ain't yeah. even started yet for real. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, your life really don't start till you about 30. Once you're about 30, you about That's like, when yeah. things start to settle in. You yeah. know what I mean? You it's like, realize. shit matters. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, um, how long have you been shooting now? Uh, so, I, so it's a funny thing. It's like, people ask me all the time, like, when did I pick up photography? What got me interested in it? Like, as a kid in high school, like, I never touched a camera. I never picked one up. I had zero interest in it at all. Um, but then when I went to the military and I joined, and after boot camp, um, I remember I was sitting in my barracks room, and I was sitting there on the bed, and I watched this video, and it was some guy that would walk up to you know to anyone in public and be like, "Hey, can I take some pictures of you?" And then like it was behind the scenes video. Right then and there, he would like turn him into a model. Like the pictures were dope. Like, yeah, they were sick. And right then and there, I watched that video. I went straight to his profile. There was a link in his bio for all the equipment he has. I bought it right then and there. That's so that was like a little bit after I graduated boot camp. So I've been doing it for probably like close to two, two and a half years. So I got here to Jax. That's where I, that's where I really sped up with it. Got you, got you. Man, looking at your photography, I would have thought you've been doing it, you know, 10 plus. You know what I mean? I like, appreciate that. I appreciate for that. Sure. I've, I've had people tell me and like that's really that's really humbling because I mean it's not, I don't want to say it's that difficult to become a good photographer um, with all the research. Like, I mean, I'm self taught. I mean, usually right, right. photographers, are self, I mean, they have schools and stuff for it, but I've heard that it's not necessarily worth it. Mm. Um, as far as like, you know, because you can go to YouTube, bro, and learn anything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Like YouTube, YouTube University. Yeah. YouTube, Google, like, whatever. So, I mean, I, I, I definitely appreciate you saying that because I've had people tell me that before. And, and like I said, it's humbling, man. Cause, for sure. Because, I mean, like, I never thought when I picked up the camera I would be where I'm at now. Right, and that's, right. That's that's the biggest thing, and I think you know one of the things I wanted to talk about was, you know, my favorite thing about photography um, is definitely the people that you network with, the people that you meet, and the ways that it forces you to grow without you knowing. Like, For sure. I, like, and that's funny coming on here today. Uh, I was a little anxious. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie, because being on the other side of the cameras, you know, it's like I'm, I don't do that a whole lot. Right. Yeah. Um, so like when I think about you know anyone that knows me or anyone that I grew up with watching this video, they're gonna be kind of like if they ever watch it, they come across. It. <laughs> if they watch it, they're gonna be like you know who's that? Like that's not the Nate I grew up with. Right, you know, right, so, right. <laughs> so I mean it's just the the ways that the camera has been used as a networking tool for me and the the, the keys to the doors is open. It's it's it's, it's amazing, bro. That's like, what's up. That's a blessing. Been crazy. It's All been right, crazy. So let's backtrack sure. a little bit. So you went on. You was looking at somebody's video. And they were telling you like what all equipment to get. What was it? Uh, if yeah, you can so, remember off the top of your head. Yeah, so right then and there, and it's funny because I remember you asking me earlier, um, like what I started with. I didn't really, I didn't have any interest in it before. Like I've never touched a camera. So right then and there, the camera he he he's Sony, hmm. um, and I went straight to his Instagram link, and it was a it was like an Amazon wish list, and it had all this stuff on there, and it's a Sony A7. Okay. So right then and there, that's what I bought, and I've been shooting. I mean, it's the same camera. I haven't I haven't switched out. I've upgraded. I mean, I have. I have new lenses and stuff. Right, right, right. But yeah, so so Sony A7 is what I'm shooting on right now. So what's more important, the camera or the lens? Um, I see I see people say different things. They be like, it's uh, you could get some cheap shit. It's just the editing. It's yeah. the lens. It's yeah. I yeah. see I see all kind of answers. But so, what is it for you? In my opinion, like 
it's the editing for sure. Like the, the knowledge that you have um, for how you can manipulate a photo is definitely like the primary, you know, the primary key to being a good photographer for whatever you want to consider consider good. Um, All right. Yeah. But outside of that, you can have a cheap body, but then next it goes glasses. The the lenses that you get is definitely like the next in line. I mean, because it makes it makes a difference on sharpness. It makes a difference when you know when you use like your, your f stop and the, you know the bokeh. And I know that all sounds like nerd language because I don't, I don't know, how much <laughs> I know about cameras. But right. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, definitely lenses, glass next, and then after that, at the end is probably body. You know, camera body. Okay. So yeah, before we recorded, me, me and you was talking about iPhone photographers because like it's a lot of people, yeah, doing photography from iPhone with iPhones. But I know. It's a lot of raw people. For example, I was asking, did you know Mal? You say you know him, but he's a good friend. I was out. Here, I was out with him one time on his on a little shoot he was doing, and this nigga pulled out an iPhone, <laughs> and it wasn't even a, a new iPhone. It was an iPhone five C. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, when you about to do the photography? When you gonna do the pics? He said, I already did them. He just was doing. I thought he was doing like test shoots, like getting right, the lighting right. right. Yeah. Nah, he was legit doing the shoot with the iPhone 5C. And I was like, man, you like the best photographer in Jack. I thought you was about to have like the big body Sony A7 right. 333 or some yeah, shit like yeah. that. But now nah, he did it with the iPhone and I, I was just amazed by that. That's, that's I mean, like I said, that's when it comes down to knowledge. The right. knowledge of the editing, like the, the post-production that you have of the pictures, like that, that would be, for anyone out there, that's what I would recommend you to focus on when you're first starting. Because once you have that knowledge, like, camera bodies in you know they're not going to really be that important i mean yeah you're going to want the next bigger better thing right as long as you have that base knowledge bro you can do a lot without needing to feel like you have to go get the next the newest you know biggest thing definitely so, right that yeah so what's some tips that would you give to some beginners that want to do photography uh so for me <coughs> like when i first started um man i would just say you just got to go out and shoot and you can't be you, you can't be afraid to you know, ask someone for some pictures. Right. You, you got to go out there. You got to walk up to them. You got to say, "Hey, you know, you don't got to say that you're new to it." I mean, because obviously they're gonna, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna right. They'll, they'll, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you just go up to them like, "Hey, like, you know, let me take some pictures." You know, you get up there, you take your pictures or whatever, um, and like you just you just do that back to back. I mean, it's a practice thing, right? It's like that's what they tell you. Practice makes perfect. So for I mean, sure. just get out there, do your thing, um, man. Not saying you did this, but that seemed like a good way to get some women out here. You see a good one? You see? <laughs> you see him? <laughs> hey, look, I'll be over there. Hey, he done blushed up. I didn't know that's going to come up. Already, Go ahead, up. give us your stories. <laughs> give us your stories. <laughs> uh, all right, so here. He was like, man, look, that's how I met my girl. Now nah, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I, I'll say right now, I mean, that, that's definitely brought up a couple of times. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that, that that was my initial, like, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to do, yeah, do yeah, photography yeah. so I can shoot models, and I, you know, right, behind right. the scenes I can shoot my shot. Like, that's not what I'm doing. Um, but, I mean, you're not wrong in that aspect. Yeah. I mean, because when it comes to taking pictures, I mean, obviously, there's dude models and there's, there's dudes out there that model. But mm -hmm. when it comes to who wants pictures and who, you know, benefits from pictures the most, it's going to be female. Yeah, right. right. It's going to be women. Right. And so, they're going to promote the hell out yes, of it. You know what I'm yes, saying? You might see that picture every day yeah, for a week. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how you're going to grow. I mean, bro, you get out there and you do some good shit with a model that's got a good following. Like, that's that's the quickest way to grow. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, I've had a couple close call, close calls, I'll say that. So, I like, that. there's been some stuff where I've, I'm slowly learning, like, yeah, you don't be in it for that. Because if you do that, especially in a city this size, and you know where the creative community community is small, it's, yeah, it's not that it's not that big, it's not that large, and kind of everyone knows everyone. So mm -hmm. when you get in and you do that, man, you just gotta you gotta keep it professional, right? One hundred percent. Yeah, you gotta be careful. With that. You gotta be careful. One hundred percent. Because I mean, next thing you know, like. Yeah, you, you meet up with her, you have no intentions like that, but then something comes of it, right? Mm -hmm. So then af afterwards, like, you know. And y'all just being adults and then. And like, so I'll tell you right now, like I've met up with girls before and I'm like, you know, I'll shoot them and that's never my intent. But then after meeting them, after being around, I was like, damn, like she's actually hella dope. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I can fuck with her. Like, yeah, yeah, she's cool as hell. So the next thing you know, like you send her the pictures, she's like, oh, these are so great, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you know, it's like, Let's get a drink. What you let's doing get, later? Yeah, let's yeah, get yeah, some dinner. Yeah, like, sure. I, like, thank you for the photos. Like, let's hang. Let's actually hang out outside yeah. of that, though. So, I mean, 
if it works, it works. <laughs> if it doesn't, you got to be careful with that because right. like, next thing you know, as soon as you slip up, as soon as something happens, it's going to affect your business. Mm -hmm. You know, next thing you know, she going to her friends. Mm -hmm. Her friends have friends. So like you just slowly get into each outer circle and it's just going to expand. And the next thing you know, like your name's out there and not such a not positive, positive way. Not way, yeah. Yeah, and it's hard to reverse that. Almost impossible. Like I would say close to impossible to reverse to reverse that for sure like yeah. once your name's kind of out there you kind of have that like bad rap without girls even meeting you or ever knowing you like yeah. that's it's getting yeah, over your name is everything i knew this one photographer he was on he was just on twitter i always <laughs> knew something was weird because he was just doing strictly just women only yeah and then something crazy got out about him and that just ruined him he couldn't yeah. even really do pictures no more he yeah. deleted all his social medias and i was like well there you are. And that, that's what I'm saying. It's like that's that was never my initial intention. <clears throat> right. If something comes of it, I'm like Yeah, it just it just happened. Like I'm know. a guy, like yeah, right, right, right. I, I could I could welcome it. We but adults, like, that's yeah. not it's not I'm I'm not gonna go do a beat shoot with some chick like, oh hell yeah, like yeah, like Yeah. You, know, you ain't no perv. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. And that's I'll say that's the hardest thing about being a dude in this this community in this, you know, realm of professionalism is Focusing on how to uphold that professionalism because soon, I mean, literally, it takes like one word. As soon mm -hmm. as you slip up and you got that that title, man, it's dangerous. Like, yeah, absolutely like, right. It'll, it'll ruin it. You are absolutely right. So, I mean, never, never go to. And it's funny because, like, I actually have a template for when I send messages or when I send requests to, you know, shoot with a girl. Like, I just you got to be as, as respectful as possible. And if you're if you're gonna initiate a certain picture or a certain pose, you got to let them do it. Right. Don't ever, right. Don't ever be like, okay, now. You know, like poking shit. Yeah, out yeah, a yeah, bit, yeah, you know? yeah. Even if you know, even if you know it's gonna look good, you right. can't you can't go up and say that. Yeah, nah, oh. I feel you. Yeah. I couldn't be no photographer because of that reason. I, I like I'm I don't wanna have to guard my words as much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's not to say that um, you know, I'd be on no crazy shit like, hey man, toot that thing up in the air, nothing like that. But it is just to be like, look, you know, I know what you're going for. And the poses you're giving me aren't really, and it's, it's it, yeah, it's hard to read, right? Exactly. You go to you go to her Instagram, and you you've seen photos that she's done in the past. It's like okay, like she she's a little she's done some confidence shit, right, so, right, you know, right. So, so it's just you don't want to go out and be like, hey, so I've seen you doing a photo shoot like this, so why don't you do it with me? Like that, you don't want to be like that at all. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But I think if I was a photographer, I'd be shooting just odd shit anyway. I'd be out in the trees, you know what I mean? Like shooting stars, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I think astrology is dope. That would be my kind of photography. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I, I, I tried to get into that at one point in time, but I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, So when I started photography, I actually started with uh, with cars. Okay. I went, um, I got down here, I moved down here. Um, I joined a Facebook car group. And they posted something about hosting a meetup. So actually, I was like, okay, why not? So I just went. I went with my camera. I walked around. I took pictures. I got um, I got the contact info for all the cars I took pictures of. Went home, edited them, sent them out, whatever. And that was, I mean, that's, that was my, my starting line. That's yeah. kind of how I got started. So the first thing I was into was cars. And then slowly it got into, like, more landscape or more city. Like, I would go gotcha. downtown. I would go downtown by myself, and I would just take pictures of the downtown. Yeah. And then slowly, that started to build up my following. And next thing you know, I get my first booking for, like, just some normal portraits. Mm hmm You know? And then from there, it just went on to, now I'm working with people. Right, so like, right. I've definitely had my stages of, like, what categories of photography that I work in, for sure. That's dope. I was going to ask about that. Like, um, you know, do you, do you find yourself... Um, Shoot, you know, going into a rhythm outside of shooting portraits or people, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Do you get inspiration from those kind of shoots? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, you know, when I said I started with cars, like I was doing cars, 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 cars. I was going to dealerships. I was mm -hmm. walking in like, hey, let, let me take pictures of That's your dope. car. Like, That's dope, Let yeah. me try and get on your, ma your next magazine or even, you know, put one of my pictures on your website. Yeah. So, you know, I was doing that. Next thing I know, I'm just kind of, you know, photography for me, it was like, I mean, not to get like super deep and you know into detail, but I mean, it literally like it saved me. Like right. when I got down here, you know, I joined the military. I moved down here on my own. I was still adjusting. I was still transitioning. My camera gave me something to do. It gave me something to focus on. So I would go out by myself. I would take these pictures and I would upload them. And you know, uploading social media like social media is like very, it's a very not not touchy subject, but it it can be very like hypocritical you know and what you're sure. saying that it's not real right for sure it's so like when you go when you post a picture you know you don't want to pick you don't want to post it for the numbers right like that that's internally that's what you don't want your primary focus to be or you're going to burn out 
Yep. As soon as you don't get that reaction, mm-hmm. you're done. Yep. So I would just say, man, like started with the cars, went to like, you know, just walk around doing kind of adventure photography. That's what you want to call it. Um, and then from there, you know, I got a couple of people interested and then I linked up with a couple of people, got put on their pages that had a bigger following. And then slowly, slowly more and more requests started flowing in for like, you know, hey, I have a birthday or hey, you know, I'm graduating or hey, you know, and slowly got into, you know, you know, more, more, more lifestyle, yeah. more portrait stuff. And I would say that's primarily like that's what I enjoy the most is lifestyle stuff for sure. For sure. That was dope. Yeah. yeah. So how was it your first shoot that you did? Uh, let's see. So my first shoot which I did was at that car show. Right. Like I said, oh. so I, I showed up. It's probably like actually my fault. My fault to interrupt you. Your first paid shoot you did with a person. Okay, so, so my kinda, first yeah, 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 okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So my first my first paid shoot came from that car meet I went to. All right, so I there was a car there. I took pictures. I sent it to him afterwards. He's like, hey man, like I like the pictures. I want to do something more like outside of me just being parked in a line of cars. Mm. So I'm like, okay, bet. So like you know, kind of tell me what you want to do. And uh, it was a Mustang. It was an older Mustang. It was a Cobra. He hit me up. Um, we went to Ortega Park in Westside. Uh, we just kind of did some stuff over there, took some pictures, then we went downtown, did some pictures of just his car, and uh, he gave me a hundred bucks. And I, bro, the feeling, I mean, that that was when I, I could imagine, yeah. That was when I learned. I was like, damn, I was like, I could actually turn this into a side hustle. For sure. So then that right there was definitely the, the like, all right, let's get, let's get it. And then from there on, bro, my, my messages, I would just, I was shooting shots, everyone. Like, yeah. I was going to more car meets, handing out business cards, like doing all that stuff. So. My first paid shoot was very, like, I, I'll remember it till like, for forever. That's what's up. No matter how big I get, so. That's uh, dope. So outside of the cars and whatnot, how did you get your cl- uh, other clients outside of, like, car content? Bro, shooting shots. Oh. One, yeah, for sure. Like, so, so you so just took first, it upon yourself. Oh, man. Like, I would go to the explore. I would go on the, the search tab in Instagram, and I'd literally search, like, I'd, I'd type in the hashtag Jacksonville, and I'd scroll to until, and you know, until I found people that, you, know, you wanted look, to shoot yeah, yeah right yeah. and then you just shooting shots like my dms bro if you were to look at my dms i've, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages <laughs> sent to like all kinds of people and like i said i had a template like you know hey i'm nate i'm a local photographer trying to build my portfolio so you know if you want to shoot let me know if you right. want, like cool whatever so i mean just like sh- the the more you shoot the bigger your network's gonna get so like as the more you shoot the easier it's gonna get right like, when right. i first when i first started hundreds and hundreds of messages and most of the time like out of those hundred you get like maybe two back i hear that i hear that that's crazy but yeah i definitely but that, hear that true. yeah that two turns into six and mm-hmm. six turns into 20 and the 20 goes to 50 like right that's just how that's how you grow so for sure just so, don't definitely don't be afraid to like shoot that shot so how did you tap in with luke nishan uh so that's funny um the workshop that i work in uh with my military job there's a kid in there um, my, you know, same age, whatever. Like me and him hit it off when we first, when I first got there and was checking in and stuff. And he actually gets his haircut by Luke. Got you. Um, so I guess he was probably in there getting his haircut sometimes. Like, hey, you know, there's a dude in my workshop that does camera work. Um, so he gave, um, he gave Luke my number. And then I think a couple of weeks later, whatever, Luke hit me up. He wanted to do a photo shoot with his cars. Um, I don't think I don't think there was specific specific reason or anything. But I, you know, I pulled up. I shot his car, did that thing, and then I mean, ever from there, I mean, Luke's real. Like, yeah, like he good Luke, people. He he's definitely good people. Like, he is he is my biggest reason for the growth that I've had in the city. That's for what's sure. up. That's what's up. For sure. I mean, he's he's definitely tapped me in. I mean, he tapped me in with Nardo, and it, Nardo was the first big celebrity that I shot. And I mean, yeah. that was, bro, that was that was crazy. That was crazy for sure. So definitely just making that right connect. The net, it's not who you know, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? Right, yeah. right. So networking like that is definitely definitely like how I've grown much as I have so right, so the people that's watching right now don't be scared you're gonna hit shoot them shots shoot sure. shot for sure. yeah like like I said I've seen hundreds and hundreds and I maybe get like two the brother that didn't mean that didn't define you in any way like you're yeah. gonna get someone that like <clears throat> you're gonna you're gonna do the pictures eventually and you're gonna do the picture of the right person you're gonna meet the right person you know you're gonna you're gonna make the right impression for someone so like that's what it is you just can't be afraid to put yourself out there yeah. you can't be afraid to you know pursue the passion that you have you know to the right person as right soon as, as soon as they see that passion from you like they're gonna you know that's and that's the biggest thing with thing is i i think i impressed luke in a way that you know within weeks bro he considered me family and that's just that's luke yeah like he, yeah he's, yeah he he's real genuine like he he's a, he's a real dude for sure and 
you know, within weeks he considered me family and he starts putting my name out there to his people. Mm-hmm. And then that's, that's how I got to Nardo. That's how I got to some, I got to some Jaguar football players. Like, right, I, you know, right. that's, that's how I slowly got in and I'll, I'll forever be thankful for what he's done for me and the way that he's linked me in with people for sure. That's dope. So. Yeah. Like I say, he good people's man. Um, I, I, I'm over there at the shop all the time. Um, no cap, that's my guy. So yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. He, he, Luke, I mean, Luke was military. No cap, he was, mm-hmm, he was military mm-hmm, too. So mm-hmm. they were all in there. So that was that. I mean, that too was something we had in common comp- right. instantly. So that was cool. That was dope. So, so um, when you're reaching out, right? Um, <laughs> I know that you said that uh, with women you have a template. With, with men, how 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 does that like? Um, is it typically just like you know I like what you got going. I'm a photographer. Let me let me run out here and uh, or let me help you help me kind yeah. of thing. Or? Yeah. So like so like what's my template for men as opposed to women? So so for a dude, I mean I'll just hit him up like a bro. I mean, yeah. That's a, there, first off, there's not the initial pressure of like as a photographer. How's it gonna come off? Not, yeah. Try right. not to come off as a pervert. Right. If right. I, if I hit up a, you know, if I hit up a dude, I'm just be like, look, bro, I was like, your page is dope, your style is dope, you know, you've got a decent following. I think I can help you grow. So I would just be like, hey, bro, like my name's Nate. I'm a local photographer. Um, I like your page. I like your style. I think if we work together, we could both benefit off of it. That's we could dope. both grow. So the next thing, you know, we meeting up, we shooting, doing that thing, and then, you know, he's gonna post his stuff. I'm gonna post my stuff. Maybe we'll post together because now Instagram has that feature. Collaborate. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So then, you know, you just go from there. So I mean, really, it's just a. Uh, it's a lot easier to get to get a dude to want to take pictures than a female. For sure. I hear that. I hear yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, as a photographer, what are some of your, you know, goals that you aspire to reach? Okay. Uh, so actually, I mean, one of my goals. I mean, now that we hear it, I'll, I'll say it now. Is one of my goals is to finally put myself in, a, in in front of the camera and introduce myself and you know, personalize my work more. I mean, because gotcha. that's. That's one of the biggest, most important things is because, like, in today's world, like we were talking about earlier, YouTube University, right? It's not that difficult to learn. You just got to dedicate some time, and you can learn. You can become, a, you know, a good photographer. You can learn editing, like, quick. Yep. So the way that you stand out is showing your passion, showing your showing personality, who you are, yeah. your work. And that's, that's one of the things that I want to, you know, touch on and kind of focus on. And that's kind of really why, I, you know, I'm really thankful you guys having me here. Now I can kind of introduce myself I can get my name yeah. my name my voice the way I talk you know my personality where I'm from I can get that stuff in here you know because what I want to I want to be able to provide an experience that's deeper than just the photos you're going to get right you, know, right. you meet up with, you you meet up with me for a photo shoot I'm going to have a speaker yeah you know? I'm going to play some music we're gonna right be, right we're going to cool we're going to have a good time we're going to laugh we're going to joke do whatever and then on top of that you're going to get the good pictures so right. like if you can create a good experience with your client or whoever wants the pictures that's how you lock in repeating clients. That's how you lock in relationships that lead to bigger networks. Like that's that's how you do it. That's that's what you need to focus on, for sure. That's some good advice. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah. So I mean, for sure. yeah, for sure. So what was your uh, what was your best shoot you ever did, and what was the worst shoot you ever did? <laughs> These are gonna be good. So my best shoot, man. I don't know. There's so many different aspects. So would you say like best shoot is in like Everything like, just like went pay, went like good. paying or like person. Like, let's, let's let's do this. We do pay. Okay. Hey, I know it's probably been some shoes where you probably didn't get paid that much, but just everything just went perfect. Okay. Okay. We do both of those. Okay. Uh, so where everything went perfect, man. I was um, let's see, I'm trying to think. Or even just had a great experience with the shoot. For uh, the photos came out good, all of that. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So yeah. So going back to uh, man, I'm trying to think. Cause I man, I've done so many. Cause I've, I've had so I've had good podcasts where we recorded where all the audio went good, no yeah. no, no hissing, <laughs> no the the video quality was good. I had to do much to it. Yeah. It's been perfect podcasts. It's been like I know it's been a perfect shoot where you like, damn, I ain't had to do much to this. It was easy money. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll say so. I'll, I'll say one of my most difficult. I'll start with my most difficult one. It's kind of it's kind of a funny story. It's a cool story. So. Uh, so she's a Jags cheerleader. Okay. Um, I she was actually you know now that I'm talking about it, she was one of the first people that I hit up that kind of had a decent following in Jacks that replied. Mm-hmm. And man, when I, she replied, man, I was excited. I, I heard was, that. I, I, I bet. I was like, first off, she a Jags cheerleader. Second off, she was probably I mean she was probably one of the first people that I, I worked with that had a decimal in their following. Mm-hmm. You know, she had the on the fourteen point two or whatever. Right, right, know? right. It's right. so yeah. like that for me. I had like five hundred, six hundred followers at the time. So like, damn, like this is my chance. Like, yeah. We're here we finally here. Whatever. 
So I worked with her. We did a beach shoot one time. It was a sunrise shoot. Man, it was like a Saturday, my day off. I woke up super early, um, drove all the way out there. It was like an hour drive, drove all the way out there. We get out there, man, and the bugs, the bugs were crazy, bro. Mosquitoes were everywhere. And it's funny because the entire time we were doing the shoot, if it, like weather conditions weren't that perfect, it, it was raining that morning. Um, so I was worried about that. And then we get out there to the beach, we start doing our stuff, and then bugs, the rain stops, bugs just start coming out of nowhere. And like, it, literally in between each photo, man, like I'm like I'm swatting like bugs yeah. off me the whole time. She's doing the same thing. And like, so we just rushed these pictures, man. And it was the most stressful thing. And I like, you know, I'm worried about her and being comfortable, right? All right. You know, I'm working for her. Like, I want to make sure she's good. Um, so yeah, I would say that was pretty stressful. Um, outside of that, I don't know, man. I've done so many. I I don't. I can't say that I had that prepared. I wish I did. I probably just be prepared <laughs> with that. It's all, it's uh -huh. all good. Um, did those pics come out good for her? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they, dope, they, they actually they're on my profile right now. I actually have them pinned because um, they've been like a trademark photo for me. Because that was also like she definitely tapped me in like to I guess the female modeling world, mm -hmm. right? So like once you know you shoot all these messages, you send all these messages whether they reply or not, they're probably gonna look at your profile. Mm -hmm. So whenever they look at your profile, you know, after I shot her, they saw that she was on there. So they're like, okay, cool. So yeah, he does work. And he, you know, he does, but he has work with some females and he's done some cool shoots or whatever. Yeah, that's so, dope that you got that pin so they can see that immediately. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I would just say like, I don't have, as far as like a good, the perfect shoot. Was Nardo your biggest one that you did? Nardo Wick? Uh, yeah, he's, he's, the, he's the biggest person I've worked for, for sure. And man, that, that photo shoot was an experience, I'll tell you that. I can so, imagine. So I tapped in, I, I got that connection through Luke. So Luke's original shop, I mean, he has two shops now. So mm -hmm. his first shop, um, there's a barber in there that cut that has been cut Nardo before Nardo ever blew up. Like, you know, got nationwide big or whatever. Um, so yeah, he hit me up. He's like, hey, like one of my barbers just cut Nardo before because he was about to perform in Jack's. He's like, come to the shop. You can roll with him to go do the pictures or whatever behind the scenes. He wants some stuff of him cutting his hair. So I pulled up, we went over there, man. And like, we did the shoot. And it's funny because I remember getting out of the truck, bro. I remember getting out of the truck and they're like, who the hell is this white boy? And why does he got <laughs> yeah. He actually came up like, were a little like on point with me, like to, to, to start with. And so I did, you know, I showed up, I was, I was out of my element. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Like me saying where I'm from, coming down here to Jack's, right. it's com two completely different worlds. <laughs> and I was, right. still, I was still adjusting to that. So I did that photo shoot and I remember pulling up. And so we, we got out, we went up to his little apartment or loft or whatever to do the shoot. And he had his group there or whatever. And I go to walk in, man. and. They, they were like, that's that's when they kind of held me up. Like, who are you with? And why do you have the camera? And you're not allowed to take pictures or whatever. And the barber was like, oh, cool, he's with me. So we went in and did his thing, cut his hair. And I was like, no, can I, can I grab you for a second for a couple pictures? And we're like, you know, I just kind of did it right up there on the on the deck, whatever. Yeah. Took some pictures, man. I posted those. And that's that's where I really took off. That's that. I mean, that was the initial connect. I mean, because, bro, you got Nardo on your page. Who, right, who, right. You know, that's that's any cool. artist in the city. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, they know you official. Like that. Right. Just, that took my level from down here to up here. Like, okay, yeah, he's worked with some real like, like quick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of Nardo. Like his, like I'm a big of his music, and I like how he like one of the young dudes. He kind of like still mysterious. Yeah, his demeanor yeah. is oh, a one. I'll say that. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll say that for sure. Like, yeah, I, he like real quiet. We so used to all these people just in before the camera in front of. Him. He like real mysterious. You just see him pop up here and yeah. there. No, I mean, yeah, you're definitely right, because I've worked with them. So that was my first time. I've worked with them for, like, three times since then. So I've worked with Nardo a minute. Like, not, not a minute, but... A I've few worked times, with, yeah. yeah. I've worked with him a few times. And, yeah, I mean, each time, like I said, he... I mean, he is quiet. He's pretty quiet-natured. He is he is mysterious. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely... Uh, it's definitely different. It's definitely not what you see in the videos or in what you see from other people who are trying to come up, which right. is cool. I mean, cause he's, been, he's quiet. He seems humble. Like, you know, he, he's, he's to himself. He's not all about the, the publicity and the stunting and the, you know, all that stuff. So, I mean, right. it's cool. You get any like asshole clients? Like people just coming at you crazy. I know you get some cheap ass people. Yes, bro. Cheap, <laughs> cheap. I mean, uh, I, could, I could talk about that for forever probably, but like my biggest thing, my biggest pet peeve is people wanting raw photos, right? So like, they'll come up to me like, hey, I want you to take these pictures. 
blah, blah, blah. So I'll go out, I'll take the pictures, and then I'll get home, and then instantly they're right on me, like, okay, when are they going to be done? And I'm like, okay, I need at least, you know, I need some time oh, to dang. kind of work with yeah, it. Yeah. Like, if, you want, if you want some art, if you want some dope pictures, like, you can't just, you got you to gotta be patient with it a little bit. I don't, um, get, I don't get people like that. And then on top, on Ridiculous. top. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, they're like, okay, well, send me your edits, and then go ahead and send me the raw photos so I can adjust them myself. No. No, yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Because, like, if you're going to see my page, if you're going to see my work, I have a style. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, I do what I do. So if my style is good enough for you to come to me, then I'm not going to sit there and send my raw photos for you to manipulate in any way that you want and then post with my tag on it. Like, right. that's not my work. Right. That's, that's kind of like a false, it's like a false, you know, I, reputation that you could, you kind of put yourself out there for. I hear that. And then as a, as a photographer, every picture you take has your copyright on it. That mm-hmm. is your photo. You own that. 100%. So, I mean, I, uh, recently I had someone come to me with a, they were doing a, you know, some brand shoot or whatever, and I agreed to come out there. Um, I brought a couple models, I brought a couple cars for the shoot, um, did the shoot. Afterwards, uh, you know, he was kind of, he was kind of quick to be on me about, okay, well, where are my pictures? And I was like, okay, I mean, I need a couple of days. I was like, you'll get the edited ones. He's like, okay, can you, can you upload the RAWs too? So all the, you know, all the different models and I can get them. I was like, no, I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And uh, next thing I know, bro, he's coming out with all these like legal threats, like trying to come out, like, you know, we need the raw photos so that we can like prove the, the legalities of having you there. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with it. And right. Like, and that, I mean, I wish, it, I wish that didn't happen. I wish it didn't go down like that. Cause you know, that turned into something way bigger than it needed to be. Um, but as a photographer, man, your work is your work. So you need to, and that, I mean, that's solidified. Like don't, don't, no matter who it is, the big, it can be the biggest celebrity. It can be someone just normal. Like don't sell yourself out. Mm-hmm. Like you've got your work. Uh, photography is an art. That's like, that's like you going to Michelangelo or, you know, Picasso and saying, Hey, I want your painting, but I want, I want you to change it like this. Like I like this, but change this and then I'll buy it. Like, no. Like yeah. it's the the, origi- the originality that you get from pictures is what makes you you right so focus on that don't ever sell yourself out don't ever like adhere to someone else's wants and needs because like ultimately for me it personally like taking pictures and stuff like bro i have so much passion for it so like when someone comes at me like oh, i don't really like this editor come out of this way or give me the raw photos and i'll just do it myself it's insulting yeah like I work hard for where yeah. I've gotten. And for take sure. pictures like, yourself. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for real. I'll get you I, I somebody think, with a nice iPhone. <laughs> I, think I, I think I say, yeah. I think I say, I, I speak for a lot of photographers when I say that, you know, because it is art, right? So, like I was saying, when you come at someone, you say, you know, I want it this way. You know, that's that's just it's going against everything that you initially came to that person for. Right. Right. So, you know, everyone has their style, everyone has their thing. So if you come out and like, change it this way, or I want you to do it this way, it's just like, okay, go to someone else. Yeah, nah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Especially talking about editing your photos, that's that's a bit. <laughs> and I mean, that that goes into a whole different thing. Like that, the, once you send someone raw photos, if you ever give out raw photos like that, and they edit the picture in it, bro, if it looks like trash. If it looks terrible, mm-hmm. they're still gonna put your tag on it. Yep. So then your <laughs> reputation's on that picture. It's attached yep. to that picture. So that's why it's so important, man. Protect your raw photos. Yeah. Like, don't be so quick to fold on raw photos. That's right. a good point. I, yeah. I, I hit that untag button on IG Instagram. Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I don't <laughs> oh. have to do that. Yeah. I had to Get do my that name off of this. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> I know you know had somebody, they done uploaded IG, they throw a little filter on it, they put a black and white filter. Report the ass. <laughs> yeah, because your portfolio is important. That's what gets you. That's I mean, what that, gets you clients yeah, in. That's what, that's what gets you people. So. I mean, you got to focus on that. You got to protect that. And then, you know, on a different scale, like other than just protecting your physical work, I mean, that's your passion like that. And that's, that, that would be my, 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 my advice to anyone starting would be to protect your passion. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if you, and that's you yourself. Like if you go out there, you do a bunch of shoots, you got to pace yourself. Right. If you don't pace yourself, you're going to burn yourself out. Yeah. And then. Protecting your passion is also defending yourself against people who aren't necessarily that respecting of your art. Because like I said, photography is an art, bro. So when people come at you and they want you to change certain things, they want you to do it a certain way, like 
if you want it that certain way, go find the person that does it that way. Right. Yeah. I don't because I, I, it's it's hundreds of photographers yeah. in, a, in 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 small areas. Yeah. You know and what that, I mean? So that might not be that professional or that like business oriented, which I you know I kind of get that all the time um, about balancing business and balancing the passion that you have. I mean that's the most important thing. So like the business is the website, the portfolio, the paperwork, like having all the the set in stone on writing, you know, legalities of being a photographer. And then right. your, your your passion comes into the personality of things. Like I was saying earlier, like mm -hmm. when you take pictures of someone, you provide an experience. It's more than just the pictures. It's like, that's what I like to focus on more is like, I don't want to be known as just a photographer. Like I used to be, I used to be on Instagram. I used to be shots by sour yeah. and it used to be all my shots. It used to be all my pictures. But I changed that um, not too long ago to Nate Sour because I want my name to be known more than just the dude that takes pictures. All right, right. I don't want to be out there just as that. So that's, and I mean, there's people out there that do that and respect to them. Like, cool, they just want to make their little side hustle a photographer. But I want to be, I mean, I want to be, a, I mean, an influencer. For sure. Yeah, for sure. When it comes to the camera stuff. Yeah. So You tapped into videos yet? Uh, I do some video stuff. Right. Video video is like a whole different world. It's like yeah. a whole different yeah, learning curve. Night, night, but yeah. I mean, I've, I've done a couple music videos. I've done, I've done a couple of like uh, event recaps, you know, just kind of showing up, filming the event and doing like short cut by cut like right. recap videos. Um, but video is still pretty intimidating to me. Gotcha. Honest. It's a whole, like I said, I don't know it near as much as I know photos. Photos is my comfort zone now. Right, right. Video is kind of a little out there. So yeah, I want to get into it eventually because what you can do with a video is completely different than what you can do with a picture. So For yeah, sure. I would love to get yeah. into it more in, and more. In general, you don't really see too many people that just like do both a lot of the times. Right. Yeah. And it's point. also some people that just, they do both, but like one of them be ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's either their photography be fire, but yeah. their videos be ass. Yeah. Their videos be fire, but their photography, you don't really see too many people that just know how to just do both amazingly. Right. Yeah. Like you said, it's a, cause when you do videos and you do pictures, your videos, you gotta completely change like all the settings yes. to do like yeah. different shit. You can't have a certain settings you do with the photos to do the video. So yeah. you gotta completely you gotta do all kind of shit. Yeah, I mean it's still camera work, right? You still working with the camera, but taking photos is like a complete one eighty from taking video. Yeah. There's, there's a whole different set amount, you know, there's a whole different set of rules that you have to follow when you're taking video as opposed to photos. So Yeah. Damn. I yeah. could imagine how much goes into it. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot for sure. What's something that you know now that you wish you knew in the beginning of photography? Uh, that's a good question. I would say when I first started, I mean, definitely. So they call it the the photo triangle, right? As far as setting goes, so that's that's knowing your shutter speed, the aperture, and then the ISO. So knowing those three things and what purpose each one of those serves is definitely the most important thing to learn the quickest when you first start. Because mm -hmm. um, each one of them has a different purpose and has a different effect on photos. Um, so I would say learning that, the photo triangle, um, but outside of that, like personally, like when you first start, man, like I said, going back to earlier, what I was saying is know how to edit. Know the ins and outs of your editing software. The quicker you learn that stuff, man, the quicker that you can save a photo. Like you can take a bad photo, you can go out and take a bad photo, but save it and turn it into something that like yeah. you never knew was even possible. So definitely like knowing the depth your your editing software is definitely most important because I mean you could say that that that'll make or break a photo whether you know how to take it straight like with the camera right or not. So What's some of your favorite software you like to use. Uh, so I use I've never used anything other than Lightroom. And then recently, I've started to get more into Photoshop. Okay. And Photoshop, um, you know, earlier when I was talking about the difference between photo and video, going from Lightroom into Photoshop is just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like going from, I mean, Lightroom does some base, like Lightroom's really good. You can edit a photo and get a solid photo out of Lightroom. But if you take it into Photoshop, photo, the power that Photoshop has to go into a photo and go into the colors and detail and like, just creating the atmosphere and the picture is crazy. It's crazy. It makes such a big difference. So yeah. I would say learn Photoshop, learn how to edit out of Photoshop, and then get into photos or, or learn how to edit out of Lightroom and then get into Photoshop. So okay. yeah, you don't really see too many people they say to edit in Photoshop. Yeah. Um, I know some. I know how good. I, I know how to use Photoshop pretty good. Sometimes <laughs> Photoshop be intimidating. Bro, yeah, because it's, it's so meticulous. Do. There's brothers thousands of tools in Photoshop. 
Like that's that, that and that's where it gets you, bro. When I first opened Photoshop, I was like, where do I even start? Right. <laughs> like, there's all these tools on this side. There's all these tabs up here. There's like all these layers over here. It's like where? Like what are you even talking about? Yeah. And that's where it goes into YouTube. Or you just jump into YouTube, man. You can really learn anything in YouTube. You ain't lying. YouTube will break it all the way yeah. down. I um, I'm learning 3D sculpting, and it's kind of like um, as intimidating as um, Photoshop. You know what I mean? But when I'm watching the YouTube video, sometimes, man, you know, YouTube, you can you only have so big of a, a viewpoint. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm trying to follow their mouse and all kinds yeah. of shit. I yeah. stopped the video for 10 <laughs> minutes. I'm taking notes and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Bro, but that's what I, you yeah. got to do. I have a whole, like, I, I literally went out and bought a notebook from the store um, when I first, like, started to get into the editing stuff. I mean, I have notes. Mm -hmm. I would, I, it was like, I was literally like I was going to class. You I would got pull to. up YouTube videos yep. and I would write it up there. And my little editing desk that I have at home, I have it posted on the wall in front of my stuff. Like, That's okay, smart. if you're having a problem with this, you know, I can look up there like, okay, so you're, you're trying to worry about skin tone. So adjust this, this, and this. Don't do this. Right. Or, okay, so you want to learn how to edit quicker. So you have, I have a whole sheet on my wall in front of my computer that has all the shortcuts for all the editing software. So it's like, that's you know, huge. You shift S or, yep. you know, you, you hit space, it does this, you, you know. So doing that is definitely. It saves time. It, it creates an efficient workflow. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the biggest things I think, and that helps to kind of negate some of that uh, intimidation. Yeah. A part of that is us us looking at how long it'll take for us to master something, or or yeah. to even get good at it. You know, yeah. but um, the the more you set yourself up, so I say with anything, prep work is probably the biggest stuff. <laughs> yeah, prep work, and then outside of prep work, organization. Oh You're man, like how to that's organize, a great point. Organize yeah, your five. Files for sure storage for definitely, sure it's definitely because i've definitely learned the hard way um like when i first started uh i would work off the sd card and i'd put the sd card straight on a hard drive so i wouldn't put it on my actual computer and what that would do is it would save the space on my computer it would allow my computer to run as fast as possible mm -hmm. next thing i know the hard drive that i was editing off of was like shit hard drive like it was terrible quality crashed i lost all the photos lord that's happened to me that i would say like going back to your question about the worst nightmare about you know what's your worst photo shoot I did a whole photo shoot. I came home, I plugged it in, I ex I exported it from my card over to the hard drive. Hard drive crashes. Photos are gone. Lord, photos are gone. So I had to text. I had to message that person like, like, look, like this is what happened. I can't do anything. I right, to, right. I had, to, I had to send them their money back. I had to like try and ask them to shoot again, and they were frustrated with me. So I would just, yeah, I would definitely say like. Knowing, knowing organization and then also the quality of the material that you use as far as storage goes, as far as software goes, is very important. For sure. Because that's For sure. That, yeah, because it gives you the security of your work. So. Indeed. Yeah, I, I've, I had a similar situation. I had bought like a cheap ass hard drive of like off Amazon for like $30. Yeah. And I had put a podcast episode on it. And every time I tried to like render it, uh -huh. Like one of the angles would just like crash it every time. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like I had to chop like a, like thirty minutes out of the damn episode. Yeah. Or I had to like switch the angle on like a bullshit ass angle where like yeah. somebody wasn't even talking on the angle, <laughs> but I was like I had to do it to yeah. get the episode out. Yeah. But I was like, all right, so every time I buy a hard drive, I need to buy like the best one the, yeah, and don't I go don't. cheat with it. And that's I mean, that would be my biggest I mean, going back to like my biggest advice for <clears> beginners is like Buy, you know, you buy cheap, you buy twice. Yep. 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 If you're getting into it, like you got to commit to that, the expensive one. You got to commit to the quality one. Because if you mess around, and don't with all even these little, cut corners. Yeah. yeah you, <laughs> mess, you mess around with all these lower quality things, bro. You're gonna end up spending more money, and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna lose quality. You're gonna lose, you know, like I said, you're gonna lose pictures. For sure. You know, stuff's gonna crash. So I would say, you can't be afraid to 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 jump into the expensive items like the you know because that's where you're going to get the quality yep. i mean and do your do your research because if you don't do your research you're going to mess around and end up with something that you don't even know how to use yeah you know not, yeah so i would just say that for sure that's a great point i mean you made some solid points throughout this whole interview yeah. <laughs> gave some great yeah. advice yeah. for sure I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that too, because I ain't gonna lie, bro. I was a little nervous to come on here. Nah, I, I mean, I've never done this. I've never been, I've never oh been. Oh, yeah, when you, hey, when like you came in, you told me you were nervous. That's, that's all right. Like, he all said, right, he said, y'all have a full bar over there. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I was like, let me, <laughs> let me loosen up a little bit. Yeah, you told me you were nervous. All right. I'm like, there's no point of being nervous, but that's easy for me to say. I've been, right. I do this all the time, but yeah. that makes sense. This is your first interview? Yeah, it's my first time. So I've never doing any kind of video on this side of the camera. 
I think that uh, getting you taught, like once we got you talking about the camera and everything, your comfort level really started to show, you know what I mean? And that's something that uh, people don't take into account a lot of times. Uh, We judge people often, you know what I mean? On small things, you know, personal quirks and whatever, right? But if you find someone in their realm, like if you really focus on someone in their their zone, let's just say, you'll see their true personality. And I think you showed that really well today. I'm glad you said that, because like I said, I mean, that's why I appreciate y'all letting me do this because like man when I tell you I'm like I'm passionate about this stuff man I'm passionate like yeah, when talking. I go back to where I used to be man I mean literally when I say the when I when I say the camera saved me I mean it saved me from a lot of things a lot of bad that I, you know a, di- a lot of different paths that I could have chose that would have been bad for me like the camera got me out it got me <clears> out <throat> you know to meet certain people and experience certain things that changed my my perspective on life bro my, like my camera work is my work bro like I take I take so much pride and I have so much passion in that and I'm glad I can be here and I'm glad I can express that personality and the passion I have for it. For so sure. I appreciate y'all. No, sure. We appreciate yeah. you, man. Um, and like I said, I, I was thinking about earlier in the interview when you said that, uh, you know, if your people uh, that, that you grew up with yeah. saw this, uh, yeah. they'd be like, yo, that's not Nate. Well, I mean, it does take time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It does take time of you working in your passion, even finding yourself through your passion oh yeah before you bro, that, become huge. comfortable with yourself that's, man, and that's huge. how you've articulated all your emotions and your experiences today you know what i mean i tip yeah. my hat off to you especially being 21 like you did a that, great man. job of of again just articulating all of all of the experience all of your knowledge yeah. uh give gave great advice you know what i mean yeah. and i think for those out there that do have any interest in photography and i think a lot of people do you know yeah uh whether it's just shooting something on the iphone taking pics for their girl just, or whatever it's, you it's know it's one of those things like i was saying bro <laughs> like my camera has been a key to so many doors that i was like i was blind to at one point in my life like it's just it's nuts whether you like photography that much right. or not the amount of doors that it can open for you is it's endless bro like you can get into so many rooms with so many people and experience so many things it's going to change you in so many freaking ways bro. for sure like photography has been a blessing for me like i would i like and it's funny because I've, I've i've been a little i've been a little hesitant to like tell anyone like even my family stuff but I'm, tomorrow i'm actually getting i'm getting a tattoo and it's gonna have a camera on it. That's like, dope. That is how that's how passionate I am. Yeah, yeah. Like it's gonna it's gonna incorporate that into my life. And whether, you know, 10, 20, whatever years down the road, whether I do it still or not, right, right. Bro, this right is here a- where I'm at now, it's gonna be a trademark. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be an altering point in my life forever. For my, sure. My camera's always gonna mean something to me. For sure. That's amazing, man. For, for sure. real. Yeah. For real. All right, I got a couple more questions. Um so the military life, do you feel like sometimes I get into the way get in the way with your photography? Yeah. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I've had, you know, the clientele that I have now, the certain people that I worked with before, like I've had people hit me up and say, like, hey, you know, I'm going to Miami, but it's a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I can't just dip out like that. I can't just, you know, go down to Miami. Right. Um, when I was working for for Luke for mm-hmm. the longest, he was wanting to go do stuff and go do certain things, and you know, as much as I hated it, I couldn't do those things, man. And that's, you know, I've had. There's a guy. There's a guy up in Washington State. He wanted me to move. Hey, bro. He had a room for me in his house. He was gonna pay me this amount. He's like, bro, move out here. You're gonna be strictly my behind the scenes videographer for his YouTube channel. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna pay. Like, you're gonna have a free room. I'm. You gonna have free groceries. You just come out here and do this thing. So I was like, who wouldn't do that? Like, right. I get to right. Move out there. I get to live for free and I get to do what I love. Doesn't yeah. matter how much money I make. But something like that, I can't just pick up and do. Right. Because I yeah. still got two and a half years locked. Yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, you know, that suck. I'm telling you. Yeah. So I would just, be looking for loopholes and shit. It's, like if I break my toe. It's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's literally like it's like being it's it's like being that dog that's in the backyard on a chain. Yeah. Like, you can't you can't go out and do the things that you want to do. Right. Which right. is a little, it's a little, uh, it's I mean it's a little challenging. It's a little frustrating, you know and. But I have trust in being exactly where you're supposed to be. And, I, you know, I tell people all the time and, you know, I have tattoos with that on my body, bro. It's like you got to trust where you're at 100 percent because you're, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Like if you were going to be anywhere else, you would be there. Like you got to you got to live in the now. You got to be fully present because if you're not, if you're overthinking things, if you, you know, you think about the next move, like you're going to you might miss something right there in the moment, bro. You just got to. You gotta focus on the now. You gotta appreciate the now. You gotta live in the like that's live that's in it. the moment for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. So, what's the ultimate goal? Do you want to like open your own studio? You wanna 
do YouTube? Yeah. Or? Okay. Um, so yeah. So all, the ultimate goal would definitely be like to be the influencer, right? The, to be the guy that works with the camera, that is an influencer. Like I want to be. I wanna you want to play both sides. Yeah, I want to <laughs> like the people that get pictures taken of because they're a celebrity, and the people that take those pictures. I want to be right in the middle. Right. I want to be the celebrity because of my camera work. I hate so that. I got to incorporate that. Um, so I mean, I have a couple of different ways, a, a, a couple of different like paths that I wouldn't mind taking. Um, Ultimately, I think my main goal is to, uh, I want to move south. I want to stay here in Florida. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the military, like I said, so I think, I think I'll probably get out. Um, I want to get out. I want to go down. I want to go south, whether it be Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, whether I go to, you know, the Gulf side, I go to Tampa. Right. Um, my ultimate goal would be to, like, buy a warehouse, you know. You know, buy a warehouse that's got some garage doors so I can pull some cars in for there. Sure, for sure, And take sure. some car stuff because that's where I started, Right. right. And then I could set up a little corner on the side where I could do podcast stuff like this. Yeah. And then, you know, ultimately on top of that, I have living quarters. I just live in there. Like, that is my life 24-7, man. 100%. And then, you know, depending on how much that takes off, or I would just, I'd bring in, you know, I'd build a kitchen. I'd right, bring in right. a private chef. Like, <laughs> you know, say, you know, say there's an artist that's going to fly into Florida that wants to do a music video. So they're going to do, mu- they're going to do a music video. They're going to have their little group they're doing it with. They're gonna book my, you know, say they want to book my warehouse for the weekend. Yeah. They're gonna come in. They're gonna have places to sleep. They're gonna have food to eat. Right. They're gonna have, right. you know, it's gonna be just a whole like it's gonna be a lifestyle thing. Like that would definitely be my ultimate goal, for sure. That's dope. Yeah. Anything outside of that would definitely just be like, to be to be like a traveling personal cameraman. Like to just 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 have people hit me up for important events or things that are going on in their lives. Like hey, you know. You know, when it comes to weddings, like say someone's mm-hmm. gonna be married, they want to get married, so they're gonna fly me out to do that. Or say someone's gonna be on, you know, someone's getting some specific award, like a music artist or something, they right, want me to right. show up. And so I just fly out there and I do that. And I'm just living. And that's when it comes down to like being able to be that person that you can build relationships with your clients. For sure. Like if you can be, because like I said, anyone can be good at taking pictures, bro. But if you can take good pictures, but also be a cool ass person to some people, you can right. just be a part of the circle. And like if you can just, man. Man, I got so much. It's <laughs> crazy. I just I have a lot of passion for it. Um, I have a lot of passion for people. I have a lot of passion for purpose, man. And so right. it's just if I could just if I could find some way that I could do camera work that's gonna influence people's lives in certain ways, man. I mean that's the ultimate goal, right? That's the ultimate goal. Is just do that. Yeah. Influence people through my work. For sure. That's what I'm trying to do. Man. Hey. <laughs> I thought that was going to be the uh, <laughs> round of applause. Yeah, I should have. Yeah. Uh, it's the purple one. To <laughs> Bitch, you ain't. That's not purple, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm colorblind. Yeah. <laughs> you a round of applause. Yeah, you, you deserve a round appreciate of applause. That. Appreciate that. For sure. Yeah, you, got your, you got your mind in the right place. Yeah. Man. I salute you, man. Yeah, for sure. Especially at your age, man. I, I, very commendable. Appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate that. No, for real. That's definitely, yeah. I mean, age is definitely, it's a concern to me. It's what, I mean, it's one of those things, you know, people tell me I'm young, but I don't consider myself young. You know, like if I, if I just started this years ago and I could be 18 doing all this stuff, I, I feel like I would have a lot more room to grow. I mean, that, but that's where it comes back to living in the now. Like you can't, you can't focus too much. And there's so much stuff out there talking about the success stories of so many celebrities out there now some didn't start till they were 40 or mm-hmm. 50 or 60 mm-hmm. or yeah. whatever so i mean you just that's why you gotta that's why you gotta be present where you are man I exactly mean, it, it can it can take off at any time you can open the right door at any time bro you just gotta stay focused you gotta stay committed to it and you just gotta stay in the moment you can't For sure you can't overthink it and that's actually you know that's one of the things in my in my bio like on, on my instagram overthinking kills creativity i saw yeah. that and that was a huge bro. like that was a huge uh quote that was good it, i mean as soon as you overthink it bro you just you lose you lose the naturalness of the in the moment right yeah. like you just that raw energy yeah yeah, yeah for sure that's a good so, point man that's a good point yeah, yeah. I think I got all my questions, man. It's been a good, it's been a good man, episode. It's been a man. great episode, man. man. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, it's been a great experience for me. Like I said, I mean, I really appreciate y'all letting me do this. Um, I was a little nervous. I was a little anxious about it. But, man, I mean, just being able to come on here, portray myself to people, kind of let people see me. I mean, because for a lot of people, it's going to be the first time hearing my voice. The right. first time seeing my, you know, my movements, the way I'm, you know. And it's just... It's exciting, man. I'm, I'm I'm super excited to start putting myself out there more and you know get out of my comfort comfort zone a little bit more because 
I mean, that's that's the that's where the growth is, right? Just getting sure. out of the comfort zone. So you just gotta gotta keep pushing yourself through that stuff. So I appreciate y'all for letting me do this. Yes, for sure. No doubt, man. We appreciate you, you yeah. coming on. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been a good episode. I'm um, how you looking that camera. Cameraman. Yeah, okay. <laughs> plug, Camera. plug, plug all your social media. Cool. And all that. So Nate Sour Instagram is N8. So it's N with an 8 dot Sour. Sour is spelled S-A-U-E-R. Um, that's really the only social media I have at this point. Uh, I'm working on a couple websites. But other than that, I mean, I'm around. I'm in Jax. That's where I'm at for at least the next two and a half years. And, you know, if you see anything more of me outside of that, hopefully, hopefully you do, man. That's just... I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to get yeah, so big. I'm trying to be that guy. For with sure. The cameras, so. Yeah, y'all tap in with this brother. Get y'all some. Sure. Get y'all sure. some photos. Yeah. Book them. I, fly them out. You know what I'm saying? Fly, yeah, fly <laughs> it's gotta be on the weekend though. It's gotta be on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we gonna work on it where y'all can fly them out on the on the weekday. Yeah, we gonna, for we sure. For sure. We, we gonna find a way to get them out. We gonna work. We gonna work on that. <laughs> We're going to well, be there eventually. We were talking about YouTube. We might have to look on YouTube. How yeah, to, for real. How to, how to blankety blank, 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 blank. We're going to figure it out for you. Yeah. <laughs> but nah, for sure. Y'all be on the lookout. If you do see him in any other cities, especially on a weekend, man, tap in. Don't waste no time. Don't bullshit. His yeah. photography is amazing. You know what I'm saying? So rush over to Instagram now. Follow him. Show him some love. We appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. This has been another episode of Random Master Podcast. With all that said, we out. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all.